fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Are you Silver! Jason Fletcher operated the general store in the small hamlet of Shawnee Town, while his partner, Joe Bass, drove the peddler's wagon to trade with the nearby Indian reservation and army forts in the vicinity. Joe Bass returned from a trip to find Fletcher breaking open a large crate. You know, Jason, it's a shame we didn't get that job as agents upon the Indian reservation. Yeah. We could have cleaned up a bit of gotten it. Both of us could have retired in a year. Well... Maybe we'd get it yet, Joe. I can't tell. A uh, swell chance we have of getting it. That fellow Dawson and his wife are so honest, even the Indians up there like him. Yeah, there's ways of getting rid of the Dawsons. Yeah? How do you mean? See what's in this crate I'm opening. Uh, wooden Indians? Yeah, but hollow ones. I got them from a company that makes them for cigar stores. What are you going to do with them? Put rifles and liquor on the inside. I've got a mighty slick plan worked out to get the weapons and red eye past the Indian agent. Hmm. I'll hide these wooden Indians in the wagon shed. When the time comes, they'll help us get that agent's job at the reservation. One month later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached within a few miles of the Indian reservation in the vicinity of Shawnee Town. Suddenly, Tonto raised his hand as a signal to stop. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, what's the trouble, Tonto? You hear drums beat far off. Uh, they're up on the Indian reservation. Mm, that's not good. Drums beat for Indian devil dance. The Indians haven't done the devil dance since they were placed on the reservation. It's forbidden. Just same. Drums call Indians for devil dance. But the dance itself hasn't started. Drums call young braves now. Then dance later. I wonder if the agent on the reservation knows what the drums mean. Agent not savvy Indian drum. Him come from East. Yes, his name's Dawson. He and his wife were appointed as agents only a few months ago. Them plenty good people. Treat Indians good. I think we'd better ride by the agency and warn them of what's going on. They'll have time to put a stop to the dance and avoid trouble. That's right. Maybe send for soldiers. Monster! Lone Ranger and Tonto were not the only ones to hear the drums of the Indians. Bob Dawson, the new agent, and his wife were listening to the distant rhythm as they stood in front of their home. Bob, 
Have you been listening to those drums? They've been beating all morning. Yes, and I've just been going through this book about Indians, trying to figure out what the drums mean. They give me the creeps. I wish they'd stop. It says here in the book that the Indians usually hold their corn dance about this time. They beat drums to drive away the evil spirits. If I were an evil spirit, I'd certainly want to get away from them. <laughs> you know, they're enough to drive Mr. Bass off the reservation. Who? Joe Bass, the peddler. He came through this morning while you were putting the horses to graze. I didn't think he was due until next week. I asked him if he weren't early, but he said Big Nose, the medicine man, sent for him. Somebody's riding up now in the back of the house. I didn't hear a wagon. Can't be Joe Bass returning. wonder what old Big Nose wanted with him. He said he didn't know. I don't trust that medicine man. Big Nose seems like an ornery critter. He crumbles about everything. Well, here comes a, a masked man what? and an Indian. Oh, what the... Oh, 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 oh. Easy. Don't be alarmed. Say, just who in thunder are you? Why are you wearing that mask? I have reason for wearing the mask. Right now, Tonto and I came to warn you about the drums you hear beating. They're nearly driving me crazy. What about the drums, mister? They're beating a call for the pagan rites of the devil dance. After the Lone Ranger had explained the pagan ceremony of the devil dance, Mrs. Dawson was horrified. You really mean they kill someone as a sacrifice to their ancestors? That's their custom. The dance has been banned since the Indians were placed on the reservation. These Indians are civilized and peaceful now. You've observed no signs of trouble? No. Are you sure no liquor or guns have gotten into their hands? I'm sure of it. There's only one white man allowed on the reservation. That's Mr. Bass, the licensed trader. He inspects his wagon every time he comes through. No, there's been no liquor or guns brought in here. I'd suggest you request a detachment of soldiers from Fort Wallace as a precaution. I don't see any need for soldiers just yet. I'll go and see what the Indians are up to. Then if I think we need soldiers... Mr. Bass can carry a message to Fort Wallace. He trades there after leaving the reservation. Very well. But if trouble should arise in the meantime, ring the agency bell. Bell? Why? Uh, Todd and I are going to camp near here. We'll come if you need us. That's right. Nice of you, but I don't think we'll need help. Come, Dutta. Uh, Adios. Bye. Bye. Dawson didn't seem to be very concerned, did he, Toto? Oh, maybe he'll not believe you. Nevertheless, we'll camp in the valley until we're sure the Indians are not going to cause trouble. We need supplies, Kimasabi. We make camp. You can ride into Shawnee Town and get them this afternoon. Steady, Silver. Easy, Easy, Easy fella. One silver. Come on, town. A short time later, Joe Bass, the peddler, reappeared at the agency and was told of the visit of the masked man and the Indian and the warning they'd given. Bass listened in studied silence until the Dawsons had finished the telling. And then he asked, You say the masked man was riding a big white stallion? As fine a horse as I ever saw. As he and the Indian rode off, I heard him call the horse Silver. And he called the Indian Tonto. Do you know them, Mr. Bass? No, no, I can't say I do. There must be a couple of owl hoots on the prowl. Owl hoots? The outlaws. He was wearing a mask, you say? Yes, he was. Do you suppose they were telling the truth about the devil dance ceremony? Well, fact of the matter is, he did tell the truth. Big Nose and his bucks are getting ready to hold a devil dance. I think it's horrible, making human sacrifices. We'll send for troops and put a stop to oh, it. Oh, no, no, there's no need for that, Dawson. You see, that mask man just hasn't kept up to date on Indians. How do you mean? Well, I've been trading up here with these Indians for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. They're not going to kill anybody. But that Indian Tonto said they would. The Indians used to catch an enemy. Then they'd bring him in and burn him at the stake or shoot him full of arrows. But they don't do that anymore. I wish I could be sure of that. You can be. That's why old Big Nose sent for me to come up here today. <laughs> you laugh when I tell you what he wants. What does he want? <laughs> he wants me to get him some wooden Indians. Wooden Indians? What for? To use instead of human beings in the devil dance ceremony. I don't understand. Well, instead of burning somebody at the stake like they used to, they'll shoot arrows into the wooden Indians. In that way, the young bucks can work off steam and nobody gets hurt. Are you sure of that? Yep, I sure am. Big Nose figured that me being a trader, I could get him some wooden Indians cheap. Can you? Yes, I just happen to know where I can lay my hands on some in a hurry. I told him I'd tell you folks about it so as you wouldn't get worried. I'm certainly glad you did, Mr. Bass. Big Nose is sending one of his bucks down to Shawnee Town today. To get the wooden Indians? Yeah. When he comes back with them, you can look them over and pass them through. Of course. 
I don't mind them holding the dance, providing they don't get bloodthirsty about it. Oh, and if that mask man and his renegade Indian friend come poking around here again, I'd warn him to get off the reservation and stay off. You leave it to me. He had Sadie scared half to death. But he seemed like such a nice man. And I liked his voice. Well, I'll be on my way. Be on the lookout for the wooden Indians late today. We will. So long, Mr. Bass. Adios. When Joe Bass was well out of sight of the agency, he lashed his horses into a dead run, which they maintained until he reached the general store in Shawnee Town. He lost no time in telling Jason Fletcher what he had learned of the masked man's visit to the Dawsons. And he and his Indian pard, Tonto, are camped near the agency right now. Well, there's no doubt about him being the Lone Ranger. That horse and the Indian prove it for sure. You bet they do. Now, what about it? It's too late to change our plans now. You've got Big Nose stirred up. We'd never calm him down if we didn't go through with it. Yeah, there's an Indian buck on his way down here now to get the dummy Indians. They're ready for him. They've got him loaded on a wagon in the shed. All we've got to do is hitch his horse to the wagon. Wait. Well, there he is now. Oh. Oh, Indian. You got here sooner than I figured, but everything's ready for you. What you say? I said everything's ready for you. Just as soon as we can hitch your horse to the wagon. Take him around back of the store so we can hitch him. I mean, not savvy what you talk about. Why, well, didn't Big Nose send you down here? No, Big Nose not send me. Oh. Me come here buy supplies. What's your name? Me name Tonto. Hey, Tonto. Tonto, eh? All right, get your hands up, Injun. Why you draw guns? Get him up, Injun. We mean business. Oh, me do it. And keep him up. Yo. Yeah, Jason? Grab that coil of rope off the counter. Right. I've got it. We've got to get this red skin out of here before someone comes in and sees us. All right, start walking, Injun. What are you going to do with him, Jason? I'm taking him to the wagon shed. After we tie him up, you go out front and get his horse. Bring it around to the wagon shed. Uh, we've got that lone ranger right where we want him. Uh, what do you mean? I don't savvy. You will. Just let me handle it. Tonto had not returned to camp by nightfall, the Lone Ranger became apprehensive for his safety. Finally, he saddled the great horse Silver. That is over here. This cinch fixed. We've got to find Tonto. Easy. Come on, big fella. He found the streets of Shawnee Town practically deserted, and nowhere could he see Tonto or his paint horse Scout. The general store was closed and dark so he decided to investigate the rear of the building. As he entered the alley, he heard Scout's familiar whinny. That is over. Silver responded to Scout, and then led the way to the door of the wagon shed in the rear of Jason Fletcher's general store. Uh, Scout's in that wagon shed, steady boy. Easy. The door is locked. Steady in there, Scout. I'll have you out if I can break open the door. No use. Here, Silver. Turn around. All right, back up, Silver. Back. Now, kick the door. Kick, big fella, kick. At the command of his master, the heels of the great horse Silver lashed out at the heavy door. Their impact splintered the wood. In a moment, the masked man and Silver had joined Scout inside the shed. Now, let's strike a match and see if Toto's here. Must be he. Tonto, you're bound. I'll have you free in a moment. The ropes that bound Tonto were soon cut and the gag removed from his mouth. Lone Ranger pressed a canteen to the Indian's parched lips. Here, take this water, Tonto. There. Let me, let me talk now. I feel better. Peddler fella, storekeeper, make plenty of trouble. Tell me about it. Let me go to the store for supplies. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Tonto told how he'd been recognized and made a prisoner when he walked into the store and how Jason Fletcher and Joe Bass had taken him to the wagon shed and bound and gagged him. Daylight, then. Me see wagon here. Many wooden Indian on wagon. Wooden Indians? Uh, like Indian in front of stores. Go on. It almost sundown when storekeeper and peddler feller come here again. Them hitch horse to wagon, drive wagon into alley. Before them shut door, me see Indian get in wagon and drive off. Then storekeeper and peddler come back in, shut door, and lock door tight. You say an Indian drove the wagon away? Not right. Him reservation Indian. Me no. How many wooden Indians were in the wagon? Me not count them. Maybe eight, maybe ten. Me think Indian take them to devil dance, make trouble some way. And there's no doubt of it. And Joe Bass and Jason Fletcher are back of it. Otto, are you able to ride? Uh-huh. Me not hurt me. Me ride. We go back to the agency. Dawson and his wife may be able to shed some light on this business. Steady silver, easy, scout, easy, fella. One silver, one scout. Unaware that Tonto had escaped, Joe Bass and his partner had ridden to the nearest army post. They drew rein and dismounted before the sentry could utter a challenge. Oh. <clears throat> You'd better talk to the sentry, Joe. He knows you. Yeah, that's right. Hi there, sentry. Hello, Bass. Where's your pedal? Wait? Not pedaling tonight. Got important business. Where's the major? In the headquarters office yonder. At least his light's still burning. Keep an eye on our horses, will you? We won't be here long. Sure, I'll take care of them. Come on, Jason. When Jason was in headquarters, he talked at length to the major, telling lie after lie to place the blame for all that had happened and all that might happen on the Lone Ranger. The major at first was incredulous. But Jason's carefully rehearsed story was convincing. Now, they're the facts, just as I told you, Major. I can hardly believe that the Lone Ranger would get mixed up in such bloody business. Yeah. I've always trusted him. I never did. I always wondered where he got his money. He always seems to have plenty. His Indian friend confessed the whole thing when we cut up with him. It's too bad we couldn't have cut the mash man, too. Well, we'll likely be able to grab him tonight. Well, I'll order the troops out at once. Both of you wait here at headquarters until we're ready to ride. I just hope those Indians don't go crazy before we can get to the agency. So do I. The agent and his wife won't have a chance if they do. We'll meet you outside, Major. <laughs> yeah, well, Joe, it looks like things are turning out just like a plan. Sure. <laughs> By the time we get to the agency, Big Nose and his bucks will have killed Dawson and his wife. <laughs> Speaking of Big Nose... When we ride in with the troops and the shooting starts, make sure you put a bullet through them. We uh, don't want him taken prisoner. He'd talk and spoil everything. I'll take care of him. You just watch for that mask, man. Yes, I have a bullet ready for him. Well, there's the bugle. Let's get to our horses. After what we've done for the army tonight, I don't think there'll be any doubt about us getting that agency job. Get ready for devil dance now. Me know, by drums. They're not far, Toto. I'll stop here at the agency and question Dawson and his wife. Be right as close to the ceremony as possible and find out what they're up to. Steady, Silver. He'll be back soon. Get him up, Scout. Wait here, Silver. Those drums are getting faster and faster. Yes, but don't let it bother you. They'll start shooting arrows at those wooden Indians soon, and then maybe the drums will quiet down. Oh, I nearly jumped out of my chair. Someone's at the door. I'll answer. Dawson. Yes, Dawson, I want to talk to you and your wife. The masked man. Come in. Oh, thanks. Where's your Indian friend? He's gone to learn what the Indians are up to. 
He says they've begun the devil dance ceremony. Yes, I guess they're shooting arrows at wooden Indians by now. Wooden Indians? Yes, they brought a lot of them in today. That's what I want to know about. Did you inspect them when they arrived on the reservation? Sure, Sadie and I looked them over. Is something wrong, mister? Yes. Trouble may break out at any moment. Dawson's told what Joe Bass had said. The Lone Ranger, in turn, related what had happened to Tonto at the hands of the peddler and Jason Fletcher, the storekeeper. I can't believe that Mr. Bass would do such a thing. He seemed like such a nice man. Jason Fletcher wanted this job at the agency. My job? Yes, as agent in charge. A crooked agent could get rich here. I know that's true. If I were crooked, I could retire in a year or so. But Bob's been honest with the Indians. Most of them like him, too. Well, the only one he's had trouble with is the medicine man. Yes, Big Nose has tried to excite the young bucks of the tribe. I had to warn him a couple of times. He doesn't like Bob a bit. I'm afraid that Fletcher and Joe Bass are using him to cause trouble tonight. But what could the wooden Indians have to do with any trouble? Otto may have the answer to that question, Mrs. Dawson. He should be back soon. Here he is now. Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. What did you learn? Me find out about wooden Indians. Yes. Wooden Indians hollow, like rotten log. Jason Fletcher and Joe Bass put plenty fire water, plenty guns inside them. Fire water? Oh, he means liquor. That's right. Indians get plenty drunk. He see Big Nose, medicine man, pass out guns. Me leave pronto, come here. With guns and liquor in their possession, they'll jump the reservation and start raiding. Mm, they'll do worse than that. Don't forget, this is a ceremony in which the Indians make human sacrifices. Oh. They'll not wait to jump the reservation. They'll start now. What can we do? It's too late to send for troops from Fort Wallace. Where are the horses, Toto? Me hide Silver and Scout in Ravine, back of Agency House. Our horses are night crazy. We won't have time to get them, Dawson. But we've got to get out of here in a hurry. We can ride double on Scout and Silver. Come, quickly. Drums say they make sacrifice soon. Oh! They're shooting at us. Slam the door shut, Toto. All right, put out the lights. I'll do that. There. No, we not get to horses now. It's too late. Dawson, the Indians are in front of the agency. You and your wife follow Toto. Go out the back door while I keep them busy at the front. You come with me. We go to back door. Hurry, or you'll not make it. You can't stay here, Master. I'll join you later. Don't wait for me. As Dawson, his wife, and Tonto raced through the back door of the agency building, the Lone Ranger crouched at one of the front windows, began a steady gunfire that he knew could halt the savages only temporarily. The trigger finger of the masked man seemed to keep time of the fleeting seconds he calculated would be needed to permit Tonto and the Dawsons to escape unnoticed in the darkness. At last, he was about to turn and follow them, when he realized that the wooden building was filling with smoke, smoke that was choking and blinding him turned and groped his way to the rear, unable to see and depending on luck to find the door. The agency building's on fire. We got here too late, Major. The Redskins beat us to the door. Send the charge! The arrival of the mounted troops from Fort Wallace took the Indians by surprise. And as the carbines began to crack, they fled in terror through the night with the soldiers in close pursuit. A short time later, a strange quiet fell over the reservation. As Major Walker drew up his horse and dismounted, Beside the now smoldering embers of what had been the agency headquarters. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Oh, poor Mr. and Mrs. Dawson. They never had a chance. They must have learned what the Redskins were up to and tried to make a stand here at the agency. Yeah, no doubt their bones are charred in those embers right now. Someone will pay for this yeah. and pay daily. I put a bullet through old Big Nose. He's paid for the part he played. It's the mass critter I want to see hung. He put Big Nose up to it. Yeah, he sold him guns and liquor. I never thought I'd see the day that I wanted to hang the Lone Ranger. 
But after tonight... You know, I wonder uh, who uh, brought uh, you and your troops here, Major. Why, well, it's him, the mask man. Uh, uh, did you, uh, get him. No, you don't. Drop that gun. Uh, gun him down, Major. Get your hands up. I'll fire. Very well, Major Walker. I'll not resist. You're under arrest. For what? Selling guns and liquor to Indians on a reservation. Yes, and murdering Bob Dawson and his wife. Your Indian friend Tonto has confessed the whole thing. Oh, that's not but, true. Tonto and the Dawsons. I thought Glad that you're the... here, Major. You're alive. Tonto can tell you who sold the Indians guns and liquor, concealed in hollow wooden Indians. It's them two men. They're right. going for guns. He get them. Here, get them, Jason. Oh, no, you don't. Oh. Help the masked man, Bob. Help him. Bob Dawson pitched in to help the Lone Ranger, and then the fight was brief. A few well-aimed blows brought the plotters to submission. Oh, I quit, I quit. I give up, I'm through. Well, that's better. Oh, my... Are you a prisoner, Major? Their guilt is proved by their actions. What could have been their motive? Why did they want to start an Indian uprising? They wanted Bob Dawson's job. They could have gotten rich cheating the Indians. I see. But first they had to get rid of Dawson. They conspired with Big Nose to kill Bob and his wife during the Devil Dance Ceremony. Why did they kill Big Nose? Probably because he could testify against them. I guess you're right about that. Now you understand. Todd and I will be going. Adios, everyone. Adios. Horses here, And to think Joe Bass told us the masked man was a bandit. Bandit? <laughs> Why, he's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.